A good man bought this massive farmland and planted good seeds. His team worked really hard for days to prepare the soil and plant the good seeds. While they retired for the day to get some needed rest, the man's enemy sneaked into the farm with his own guys and they planted tares on the very farm that the good seeds were planted. Over time, the good seeds sprouted and everyone was happy until they noticed the tares sprouting alongside the good seeds. What? Who done it? The good man's team were disappointed that after their hard work, these tares show up, choke the good plants and mess up their harvest. They went to the good man. Sir, we didn't plant the tares. We're telling the truth. We did our best and all we planted was the good seeds you gave us. Is this where you are right now as a parent, a pastor, a minister, a teacher, a helper, a worker, whatever area you are serving in? You have done all you were asked, the best you could, but you are faced with disappointment. The children are not behaving as expected. The congregation is a disappointment. The students are a mess. What you are seeing is not a testament of the seed you planted and the hard work you put in. You did your best, but all you see is your worst nightmare. And you are looking to God, trying to explain, Lord, I did my best. I sowed good seeds. I didn't teach them this lifestyle. I didn't raise them like this. I didn't do this to them. Believe me, God. God says to tell you, wipe your tears. He knows what happened. God is saying to you today, you are a good man. You are a good woman. I don't rate you based on how the plans turned out. I know your heart. I saw your hard work and you should cry no more. I know you did your best. I recognize that you didn't do this. I know who did it. The enemy is trying to mess up, not just your hard work and good seeds. The enemy is after you because he's after me and all that is mine. He wants to shame me by shaming you. Don't take it personal. It's not about you or your labor. It's about me and I will take care of this too. The children are mine. The congregation is mine. The students are mine. The workplace is mine. Just like the world and everything in it is all mine. I will take care of this in my way in my time do not allow yourself to be distracted by results your life your ministry your calling is more than results i don't judge you by results i judge the heart you have served the best you can you have been a faithful servant that is all i ask of you don't worry about the plants don't worry about the produce don't worry about results i will take care of the needful at the right time in case you have been thinking and planning on how to jump into the farm and uproot the tares, God says to tell you, I understand what happened. I appreciate that you want to do something drastic about it, but don't worry anymore about this. Maybe you were shocked at the result, but I am not taken by surprise. I knew all along and I will make things right in their due time. Don't jump in hasty into the farm or you'll mess up more than you clean up. Your well-intentioned attempt to clean up the farm will not merely get rid of the tares. It will put innocent plants at risk. Stay focused on the mission. Continue to answer the call the best you can. Leave the tares in my care and I will attend to them in due time. Friends, like a good soil, lay hold of God's word and let it comfort you as you watch the tears thriving instead of the good seed you have planted, watered and watched over. If the enemy wanted to farm like a reasonable being, he would go get his own space and plant whatever he wants, right? But no, the goal is to upset the hard work of the laborers, mess up the good seeds and frustrate if not defeat the owner of the farm. Well, we know that the owner of the farm wherein we are laborers is God and he cannot be frustrated or defeated. The onus lies on us now to stay focused as the Lord has encouraged us to and not get distracted or discouraged by the tears shooting up here and there and trying to take over and mess up our hard work. Be encouraged. The owner of the farm is able to restore and revive. As for those who have chosen to believe that there is no God, 
I pray that you will be privileged to experience him in a personal way. My singular prayer for you is that you may know him. Because when you do, every other idea, knowledge and argument takes a bow. As for the group of people who think God is not relevant, who won't buy God's good idea because of the evil that is prevalent in the world and significant in the church and among church folks. Those of you wondering how can God be so good and life is so evil? How can God be so good and those who serve him be so bad? In our reality, the contradiction doesn't make sense. How can a good God create an evil world? How can a gracious God watch the unleashing of evil upon the earth? How can a merciful God be silent amidst the cruelty we hear and see every day? How can God be so true and his people be full of falsehood and pretended piety? How can God be so pure and the church is so rotten? How can God be so mighty and those he has chosen and called be so weak to the point of being pathetic? Too many questions in so many minds. I hope the above story opens your eyes and hearts a bit that God created a good world. God planted good seeds in the church. But there is an enemy out there who is going around sowing tears everywhere he can, every chance he gets. There is an enemy out there working hard to make a mess of the good that God has created for us all. In addition to discouraging the laborers, messing up the good seeds, and if possible, frustrate God, the owner of it all, the enemy is also out to deceive you by the things you are seeing and hearing. His goal is to get you not to believe God or his word. Because of all the mess you are watching and hearing about, it's all a calculated plan to mess up the church and keep outsiders in the darkness of unbelief. It's not about how good or gross the church is. It's about how good and mighty this God is, how he can sit back and let all this play out without losing it. God is not silent because he doesn't care. If God should arise and descend as we would expect, the good and the bad would all be swept away because some of us would be caught where we shouldn't be or doing what we shouldn't. God has reserved a time for judgment and we must not consider his patience as weakness. God doesn't want to sweep away the good along with the bad. So he has set a time for judgment and is incredibly patient as he watches us lose it here and there. We must not consider his silence as ignorance, weakness, or inexistence. Paul explained it this way, because God has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Acts 17.31 May we learn to be and to live as patient and as gracious as God is teaching us by his examples. Don't be distracted or discouraged by the tears. Stay focused. Keep answering the call. Keep doing your best. In due time, our God will set all things right and make them beautiful. Don't forget to subscribe and share this with family and friends. Be inspired. You are a star and it's your time to shine.